Ivan Lubovnik and Alexander Kovalenov will tell you about the future of Blend for Web. Um, or only Ivan Lubovnikov. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Your presentation already. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Good evening, uh, one, two. It's fine, yeah? Okay. Uh, good evening, my name is Alexander Kovalenov, the senior developer here at blend for web and uh, today I will give you some insights about the features we're going to implement in our upcoming releases. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, general picture here, and Ivan will continue on more specific topics. Uh, so let's begin. Uh, what we're going to do in our next releases, basically this. Hope you will find some familiar words in here, uh, but I think I should uh, make it easier, so I, I'm going to split all of this into four basic categories, which are these. Uh, one, we're going to improve our engine with a number of great new features. Two, usability improvements. Uh, I've deliberately split them from the first one to put an accent on how important this feature is both for us and our users. Um, indeed, as more and more people come every day and try to learn 3D web technologies, they should be able to do so in an easy and uh, effective way. Uh, next one is performance optimizations. Uh, I think all of you played our Pettigore's tail game, and uh, I'd say performance is not of its greatest strength. And final one is stability. We need to make our framework as stable as possible, as stable as possible. Uh, so let's talk about the features. Uh, Rendering uh, good-looking post-processing effects, particles, physics, animations, we have plan to, plans to improve them all. Uh, Ivan is going to talk about it in the second part of our presentation, so I better not talk about it right now. Uh, next, material notes and logic notes. Recently, Recently, we found out that some of our users seem to be reluctant to learn programming. Uh, they even say that these two nice visual tools are all they need. Uh, I think we've, we get it, and we'll continue our development efforts in this field. For example, we're going to implement our new vector transform node, which has recently been added to Blender. Uh, next one is material library. As you know, uh, seven quality materials were introduced in Blend for Web 1603, and definitely more are coming. However, uh, I think good materials are nothing by their own, uh, because and uh, that's why we're considering to make a nice graphic user interface for them. Uh, it, it would be very nice indeed to have some visual tools to select, assign, and change parameters of such materials. 
in an easy and effective way. And next, uh, let's let's st let's uh, uh, forget about uh, uh, visual stuff for a moment and switch to programming. Uh, of course, for advanced programming, you need to improve the APIs. Uh, we have done some things in this area recently. For example, uh, completely refactored our camera module, but of course we need to do more. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes, uh, sometimes I think uh, uh, the API is hard matter to make right up front because a lot of thinking required to do uh, to do it properly. It's sometimes trial and error way, uh, approach, and so and so on. And, uh, and uh, of course, we continue our Blender development. As Alexander Romanov said in his presentation today, uh, viewport, for example, viewport improvements are essential for effective content creation. Uh, let's talk about usability. By usability, I mean things that make uh, our engine uh, an effective tool at every stage of de of, con of development. This starts with installation, of course, uh, content creation, writing and testing your own code, and finally, finally, you get to the stage when your work is integrated as part of a web page and deployed on a server. Of course, we need to make improvements in all of these stages. Uh, for example, we plan to make improvements in our project manager. Sometimes when people think about usability, they say some phrases like learning curve um, we need to improve the learning process, and we'll do this by writing more documentation, making more self-explanatory ex examples and tutorials, and definitely we'll go in, we, we're going to do more videos. Yeah, <laughs> performance. Uh, Performance has always been and definitely will be our top priority. Um, I think Ivan is going to talk about it uh, in a few minutes, so I don't want to spoil it here. And basically, don't switch the channel. Stability. Uh, stability, yeah, it's 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 important to. Uh, then, however, sometimes when people talk about stability uh, and 3D graphics, they they're considering like it's the opposite things, because uh, 3D graphics means unstable for some people. However, the nature of WebGL as a platform for general audience, not for just hardcore gamers or users of sophisticated CAD systems, requires us to make our framework as reliable as possible. We're going to do this by improving our internal testing process and release preparation process. We have we have written an enormous amount of tests, created an, a hundreds of demos to test our releases, but going to do even more. Um, for, for some of our users, uh, actually for pro customers, uh, it's not, it's not 
so easy to make upgrades every month. For them, we're going to provide a stable, long-term supported version, which I think it will be Blend4 Web 1606, and it, it will come in June, and it will be supported for a whole year. Um, this means that uh, we're going to make improvements and compatibility fixes uh, until the next LTS version will be available next year. Uh, the next thing, thing uh, that we considering is working, is working closely with browser and device vendors. Uh, sometimes, uh, and actually there are a lot of bugs which come from them, actually. Sometimes we make, uh, we don't report these bugs to them and instead make, uh, make ugly hacks and workarounds in the engine itself. And it's, it's definitely not right. And we will we'll stop it here, <laughs> eventually. eventually. Um, and the, the final thing I would I would ask uh, I would ask you to participate in testing process because uh, uh, sometimes the testing done by our community is priceless. Uh, we sometimes we sh we fix very serious issues just before next some days before the final release and uh, yeah this is this is very important this is very important so uh, I would like I would like to ask you to test our release candidates and def definitely developer preview builds and report bugs before the final release is available yeah this is very important Uh, that's all. That's all. Thank you for listening. I think Ivan will continue pass, passing my mic to him, to him, and he will talk about our future in more detail. One, two, three. Okay. Uh, Good evening to all. My uh, name is uh, Ivan Lubovnikov. Uh, I'm one of the blend for web developers. And uh, in my part, uh, I'd like to talk about those features that can be expected in the near future, probably from uh, several months to a year or two. I'd like to start with a review of the planning improvements in the existing functionality. Uh, then in the second part of my presentation, I uh, want to tell you about uh, the new advantages brought by the upcoming WebGL2 standard. So uh, let's begin. One of the most important uh, aspects of the development process in computer graphics is uh, performance optimization. Uh, why is it so important? The optimization problem uh, always exists because uh, hardware resources are always limited. Furthermore, there are many mobile devices uh, which impose additional restrictions and we endeavor to support such devices as well. Also, a special case is uh, heavy scenes with uh, lots of different objects and hence low FPS rate. To deal with uh, this specific case, uh, two common techniques are usually applied, uh, through some culling and uh, batching. Let's look at them in detail. Frustum culling is the process of uh, defining objects that uh, lie outside the camera's uh, visible region called the frustum. Then these objects are excluded from the rendering, so we don't spec don't spend extra time drawing them. Batching briefly is a process is a pro is a process uh, of combining uh, several objects into one so-called batch. 
the optimization is achieved here uh, because uh, it is faster to render one large object than to render several objects separately. But on the other hand, uh, batched objects uh, cannot be called uh, as effectively because even if a part of this object is visible, the whole object uh, will be rendered. So uh, it is important to make uh, well-balanced batching. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, we use both uh, these techniques and they work well, but uh, there is opportunity to make improvements. Currently in Blend for Web, uh, batching is based on a regular grid where, where we can combine objects only within a single cell. Uh, this is rather primitive and may yield uh, moderate results. For example, unreasonably large batches, uh, it is bad for cutting, and uh, small uh, and many small batches like with uh, it is just weak batching. Uh, so uh, we want to implement uh, clustering algorithm which takes uh, into account the mutual arrangement of the objects so it should solve uh, the flaws of uh, the regular grid batching and uh, as a result we should uh, get a well-balanced batching uh, which uh, increase FPS rate uh, on big heavy scenes. Okay. Uh, next topic is VR. We have already heard uh, about VR today from Kirill and Raman. And uh, I just wanted to say that uh, we will surely develop uh, our engine in this direction. Uh, we will continue to expand the list of uh, supported devices and we will release uh, tutorials dedicated to VR applications because uh, virtual reality devices are a new popular popular trend and uh, no way can we leave it aside. Okay, next. Next I'd like to talk about the engine physics. Uh, the first important feature I want to note is the physics of dynamic meshes. Uh, let me explain this. Uh, for a static or just stationary object like uh, the rock on this picture, we can use the whole mesh uh, when calculating its physical behavior. But uh, for a dynamic one or just movable object. Uh, currently we can only choose a simple geometric body like a sphere, cylinder, box, cone and others. This is quite a good approximation but uh, it uh, can be restrictive too especially for physics uh, based applications and uh, the possibility to use uh, the original mesh uh, will be a good addition to our engine. Uh, another feature is uh, physical particle systems. In Blender we can uh, set uh, the behavior of particles. Uh, there is a uh, special uh, physics panel for it. It uh, allows us to choose among different uh, types. For example, Newtonian is for behavior induced by the laws of physics and uh, Boyd's is for primitive AI. We currently do not support uh, the majority of these settings. And uh, we think that uh, implementing something like this uh, is a good idea because uh, particles can be used for different purposes uh, uh, like uh, smoke or vegetation. And uh, using particles one can create stunning effects. So. Uh, to summarize, uh, these features we want to add uh, will uh, open up opportunities to create uh, the scenes with physical interactions. Okay. Uh, next, uh, let's talk about the animation part. There are two notable features uh, which we are thinking about. Uh, the first is uh, animation blending. Animation blending uh, is the technique uh, that makes uh, smooth transitions between different animations. As you can see on this GIF taken from the Pettigrew Stale game, uh, the transition is uh, very sharp and the character 
can shake while moving. So uh, this is not what we would call the future of Blend for Web. This definitely needs improvement, uh, like blending. Uh, so animation blending uh, can be very useful uh, when uh, uh, animating uh, live characters or in case of a uh, large number of animations. Uh, as a result, uh, this technique uh, should uh, improve visual quality and uh, overall experience from your application. Okay, another feature is less impressive but also very useful. As you know, as you probably know, uh, we have a special tool in Blender, uh, the Animation Baker in our add-on. It is used uh, for the preparation of uh, non-trivial skeletal and vertex animation. Uh, we want to revise its interface uh, by making it more simple, more convenient, by adding some new options and so on. Uh, here you can see it's it in its current state and uh, the future concept. Okay. Okay, now it's time for the most significant topic, uh, uh, the upcoming WebGL 2 standard. Uh, for now we've, we've had uh, the previous version, WebGL 1, which appeared in 2011. Uh, since then, uh, uh, it has become stable and widespread and is now supported in uh, many browsers. Uh, the next version, uh, WebGL 2, uh, is still experimental, but uh, we can already prepare for the new advantages that will be available for developers. Uh, here you can see the list of some interesting features, for example, MSA, instancing, HDR. So let's do a quick overview. MSA. MSA stands for multi-sample anti-aliasing. Uh, this is one of many anti-aliasing methods applied in computer graphics. Uh, but uh, uh, for now, with WebGL1, we have been using a different method called FXA, uh, or Fast Approximate Anti-Aliasing. If we compare them, we can see that uh, FXA uh, is faster, but it is uh, a kind of blurry and uh, less accurate. So where is the difference, but also where is the choice? Uh, and we think that uh, it will be good if a developer can decide when to use one or the other algorithm. Uh, and uh, as you probably know, MSA has already been implemented in blend for web So uh, the first step towards WebGL2 has already been taken. Next. Instancing. Typically, objects that are drawn in scene are described by the data arrays, uh, that is, the information about uh, the positions of vertices, uh, normals, texture coordinates, and uh, others. So, uh, uh, the more, whereby the more objects uh, we have, uh, the more memory is uh, required to store all of this data and uh, the longer it takes to send it to a graphics card before drawing. Uh, so uh, instancing is the technique uh, that allows us to render multiple copies of the same object at once. It is best suited for uh, a group of uh, identical slightly different objects. Uh, for example, uh, trees, uh, any vegetation, a crowd of people, etc. Uh, all of them, for example, will have uh, the identical geometry and normals, but uh, different color. Uh, and it turns out that we need to have only one copy for the same sets of data, uh, not uh, multiple copies for, the, for each object as before. Uh, as a result, uh, we operate with smaller data volumes, and uh, uh, which uh, reduces memory consumption and improves performance. Specifically, in our engine, we want to use this technique uh, for rendering the particle systems faster. Okay, next. Uh, HDR or high dynamic range rendering uh, is the feature that uh, probably everyone has heard. Uh, HDR is a 
post processing effect uh, that uh, makes uh, the final image more contrastive, more expressive, uh, especially for scenes with contrast elimination. HDR, consi HDR rendering consists of many effects like bloom, glow, lens flares. But the most important is uh, the most important, I think, is uh, tone mapping. What is this, and why is it uh, necessary? To begin, consider the following diagram. The image that is uh, rendered on the GPU has a low contrast ratio, LGR or low dynamic range. It has low contrast ratio compared to the human eye. Uh, for this reason, we can't render high contrast images without losing the details in it. Oh, uh, this is the same for typical LCD monitors. Uh, they have a uh, low dynamic range too. To solve this issue, uh, we can use uh, more precise uh, floating point textures thanks to the gel 2. Uh, this ups the contrast ratio and therefore here we have uh, uh, an, an HDR image but uh, for a typical monitor, again, we, ha we have this smaller range. So, what should we do? We need to convert our HDR image to a low dynamic range. And this special conversion is called tone mapping. Uh, currently, in Blend for Web, we have uh, bloom, lens flares, and other effects, but uh, for the real HDR rendering, we need that uh, floating point textures. Uh, so uh, we have this feature in our plans. Next. And finally, the last things uh, I want to tell you about are MRT and transform feedback. MRT stands for multiple render targets. Let's not go into the detail. Um, just note that this uh, technique uh, is often used for the deferred rendering. Deferred rendering is the technique that makes lighting costs to be independent of a scene's complexity. Or just in other words, uh, uh, the number of objects and polygons. Uh, as a result, this uh, uh, as a result, uh, it may give a performance boost on uh, large scenes with uh, multiple light sources. Transform feedback is uh, the technique that uh, allows us to uh, retrieve uh, some geometric data during the rendering and to reuse it uh, right on the GPU, which is significantly faster than uh, send this data from the CPU. And uh, this feature uh, opens up uh, the possibility of uh, simulating uh, the moving the possibility to simulate uh, the movement of particles uh, entirely on the GPU. Uh, and as I mentioned before, we really want to uh, to support uh, physical simulated particles. And uh, next. Okay. Uh, uh, give me a second. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, some aforementioned functionality, some aforementioned WebGL2 functionality is now available in the form of uh, extensions for WebGL1. Uh, however, they are a part of the new upcoming standards, so we are planning to seriously work on all of these features in the near future. The new standard uh, will bring more opportunities, but it is also more restrictive because not all devices that uh, support WebGL1 uh, uh, will be able to run WebGL2 applications. Uh, this basically relates to old graphics cards and some mobile devices. But we, of course, will not refuse WebGL1. We will provide the support uh, to both the old and the new functionality. Uh, so, in general, as we see, uh, blend for web has a room to grow, so we are looking confidently into the future. And uh, that's all. Thanks for your attention.
No tricky questions, please. <laughs> Oh, it works. Uh, first of all, I'm a bit confused because you mentioned MSA as an advantage of WebGL 2.0 and it is available in WebGL 1. Yes. So, well, it will be yes or no available in WebGL 2 also because, uh, as usual, they, uh, the standard writers are... Uh, um, clever guys and they leave some room for them and uh, as if I remember correctly the WebGL 2 stays the same as WebGL 1 it can return it can turn off anti-aliasing if it wants it can return smaller drawing buffers if it wants and all the same stuff that was my first question second question uh, do you use uh, extensions you mentioned uh, as different running re rendition paths to like test new functionality to see what happens to to try to move closer to webgl 2.0 uh, now use alex what do you think about msa i think i i will, I will answer to msa and ivan will answer to the second question uh, uh, I have the third one. Then I said uh, yes and no. Uh, yes, uh, um, WebGL one, uh, 1 zero al allows to specify MSR rendering for output buffer. However, for complicated engine, uh, you require some additional uh, post processing post processing stuff to do, and uh, you you always. You you don't have this opportunity to render directly to output. After you render something, you must do some post processing after it. It's it's like uh, oh yeah it's 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 sophisticated. It's more sophisticated approach, and uh, it uh, it uh, becomes uh, an issue with WebGL one zero. But in two, in WebGL two, you have possibility to specify MSI rendering directly for each drawing buffer. So you can render MSA buffer, then bleed it and do post processing and you you are fine and you have nice anti aliasing. Okay. Uh, and uh, for the extensions the second uh, question was about uh, different extensions. Yeah, yeah, do you use them like do different parts what you think of them? Because well instancing is uh, instancing multiple render targets, floating te floating point textures. Uh, yes, we are also available you had as a, a little bit of a of an, uh, typo I think because you can't you don't exactly can save sixty five thousand numbers in floating point. Yes, yes. This is not how they work. Um, and my last question, you mentioned on the one of, his, on, of your first slides, uh, WebAssembly. Uh, yeah, what, what do you think of it? Do you have any hopes? Do you, did you try it for, for, for anything? So what, what's your view of this technology? Uh, uh, as far as I know, we uh, don't use uh, such extensions. Is that correct, Alex? It's more like a new browser technology. Web, web yes. Uh, yeah. Maybe I uh, Yeah. It's like. It's, I don't. Uh, I don't say we hate it. <laughs> no. Uh, actually, we 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 also can. Uh, achieve some great uh, things uh, with it. Um, for example, we can compile our physics engine, our external physics engine, using WebAssembly and get nice uh, results like uh, low memory footprint, uh, uh, fast code execution, and so, and so on. Uh, however, the uh, industry we, we don't like how it is pushed pushed by some companies like unity and uh, 
they, it's, it's like they enforce it. They, they try to compile the engine, Unity game engine, to make it available through browser, and instead of writing their own engine in JavaScript, porting it, porting it like normal guys, they want to push his, their own technology to web. It's, it's like new Flash, it's like new Java applets. So we don't like it. Yeah. Well, they don't have any choice, do they? Uh, because it's not. It's not. It's because not finished right. yet. It's not finished yet. Yes, it. it yes, it's not. But uh, for example, uh, as far as I said, like uh, Chrome team have very high hopes because they plan to do like uh, correct concurrency, like shared data, shared buffers in WebAssembly, yeah, uh, yeah. off main thread rendering, and some other stuff like that, which is yeah. well, really, really, really good for like uh, high performance applications, such as for web, such other engines, such as jail applications. Uh, we will definitely also benefit from it, yeah, definitely. But it's not connected to WebAssembly. Uh, actually, what uh, you mentioned, this technology is not connected for WebAssembly. It's just low-level API for JavaScript application too. It just They just want to uh, make it uh, on low level. It's not actually for uh, like high level of JavaScript API. So it uh, will be accessible uh, not just from WebAssembly. Ah, yeah, yeah, please, in a short, just a uh, few words about the full VR support, uh, because they haven't heard the answer. Okay, uh, we definitely will get to the stage when we will have uh, full VR support. Uh, now we are doing step-by-step -step approach and uh, making, uh, making improvements with, which, with each release. So, yeah, I think it's it is. Thanks.